It's been ages since I first laid eyes on the original prototype shape of the Model I mounts, like over two years at least. So when I opened this retail box and saw it again a few weeks ago, I was pretty underwhelmed. For me, a wired mouse in 2022 has to be something pretty special, and another G502 similar shape isn't exactly groundbreaking stuff. That thought ignores a couple things though. The Logitech G502 is consistently the best selling gaming mouse, period. And not everyone can or wants to splash for some of the punishing price points of the top tier wireless mice. I never do this, but I will admit too that I watched BT's review of this as I wasn't even sure I was gonna review this mouse. And his view of this mouse does fall in line with my personal take on it. Their new completely out of pocket social media guy could come for me as well, but it is what it is. I do still wanna dig into this mouse objectively because I think there is a large market of people out there that have been waiting for a lighter weight G502-ish shape. And that's pretty much what we've got here. It's a couple millimeters shorter at 127 millimeters in length, spot on in terms of width at the wing at 73 millimeters, and within one millimeters of height at the highest point at 42 millimeters. The left to right ergo fall off is pretty similar here. The big thing that changes the hand feel of this mouse is the width across the body, not including the wing. The Model I is between four to five millimeters wider right there. That's not a small difference in the world of mice. With a hand measurement of 20.5 by 10.5, five centimeters, the G502 has always felt a little narrow for me. That's a big reason why I've never made it. So right off the bat, the Model I is more comfortable for me, especially for long sessions. Either matte black or white on the coating. Weight on this is 69 grams. Nice. Ugh. That's a massive cut in weight versus the base weight of the G502 at 121 grams. I say base weight because that mouse allows you to add up to 18 grams if you're trying to bulk up those forearms and the Glorious mouse features none of that. Interesting side note, Glorious recently dropped a press release stating that they were dropping the PC gaming race portion of their name because of the increasingly problematic verbiage of the PC master race meme where their name comes from. Now they're simply Glorious and they'll be rolling out branding changes slowly as they refresh products. Overall build of this mouse feels feels solid. My copies have minimal creak, even if you go looking for it. I mean, they should. They've learned a lot from the numerous mouse releases before it. This mouse is unmistakably glorious at first glance, as we still have the honeycomb pattern on the top and bottom shell and the RGB ribbons on the side. I'm kind of surprised to see them still keeping with the large mascot logo. It feels a little dated at this point. Would have looked much cleaner with just the glorious type logo at the front. At least they've moved it to the outer side this time, so you don't have to look at it. As usual, the triggers are split from the body with minimal comfort groups. There's virtually no pre-travel here at all and minimal post travel that I don't notice in game. These feel and sound good using the Kale manufactured glorious switches under the main triggers. A little side play on mouse one, more so than the G502, notably missing for 502 fans are the two alt buttons alongside mouse one. The scroll wheel for better or worse is also unmistakably glorious. I don't have any squeak at all on this wheel and the alignment is but I do get a little bit of case rattle and some resonance though. It's hard to top the G502 scroll wheel. It's basically perfect, especially with being able to lose the clutch and have that infinite scroll. And it also features side scrolling, which the Glorious model does not. Point goes to Logitech on the scroll wheel for sure. Still have the split DPI buttons up top. They're flat enough that they never really get in your way and they're set far enough back from the wheel that they really require a deliberate press. Sensor here is still their BAMF sensor. It's a custom version of the Pixar 3370. Nothing really to note here, performs fine. Location is dead center on the frame and it has a minimum lift off of one millimeter. Glides under here are the glorious G skates, 0.81 millimeter thickness, and there are six small ones around the edges of the mouse. My copies did not include the extra glides that we've seen on previous mice that fill in the gaps between the feet. We also still have the glorious ascended cable, a braided paracord-like cable. This is versus the super thin rubberized cable on the 502. I don't really prefer either, to be honest, but the glorious mouse plays a little better with mouse bungees due to the thickness. I don't ever use a wired mouse, so there may be some better stock cable options out there, but I couldn't tell you. Side buttons are where we start to see things get interesting. We have that sniper button location and we have three side buttons where we normally only see two. Two of these buttons are removable and swappable. If someone just handed me this mouse and I knew nothing about it, I would never guess this. All the side buttons feel good to me. Crispy, no mush, hard stop on the frame. The two removable buttons don't feel any different than the two permanent buttons. And I definitely would not say these are easy to remove. Glorious even includes a link to a video showing you how to swap them. These are magnetic and you can use a fingernail if you know exactly where to go, but they're tricky. It would be nice if Glorious included just like a base basic plastic pry tool in the box. Unless you frequently repair electronics, you probably don't have one of these laying around. You have three options for each of the two locations. You can go completely flat to the frame, deleting a button from that location, or you have a couple different shapes. You can change the sniper button to make the press a little more deliberate. The rear button you can change to make it protrude more from the body. I like this a lot more than the stock as I often found myself accidentally hitting the middle button along with the rear when I would rock back to hit it with the rear of my thumb. The only thing I would have liked to see them do different here is include a sniper button that had thickness towards the 
rear of the mouse that might make it easier to press for people with smaller hands or shorter thumbs. That's an annoyance I personally have on the G502. Overall, the side button configuration here fits me like a glove. I don't think these swappable buttons are just a gimmick. I'm a big fan of all of this. Shape-wise, this whole mouse feels like it was personally designed for my hand. For reference, I almost always main either the G303 Shroud or the Final Mouse Starlight, but the 303 at 75 grams sees the most use by a wide margin. I still use this Model I in a claw grip when gaming, and I kind of relax into a palm when I'm editing. There's not much in the way of support on the rear of the mouse, so it is more of a conscious thing to stay in claw for gaming. You just have to choke up a bit on the frame, but the light weight of this mouse makes it really easy. My palm does spend the majority of the time directly on the pad, which I'm used to from the 303. No issues at all with in game performance. Admittedly, I haven't been playing a lot of FPS lately, so I'm not going to try to dazzle you today with my garbage aim, but it's always the move to lower the debounce time and the glorious core software to reduce that click latency. So for price and value, we're looking at 60 bucks here plus shipping. That would be pretty competitive against Logitech's regular price of 80 bucks, but Logitech being the elephant in the mouse space, they've recently cut that price all the way down to $39 and change from Amazon with free shipping. That's basically budget pricing for their top tier Hero Plus sensor. The switches in there may develop some double click over time. I'm not sure if they've updated the Omrons in there or not. You also get the far superior scroll and five bonus buttons versus the four on the Model I. Razer has also cut the price on the Basilisk V3 to right at 60, which is a more closer clone of the 502 in terms of body shape and features side scroll, but does lose the adjustable tension scroll of previous models. It uses Razer's V2 optical switches, which I do like, but it does not use Razer's flagship Focus Plus sensor. You also only have three bonus buttons over there. Both the Basilisk and the G502 feel better built and more premium in hand for sure. Like, it's not even close. But weight plays a factor there. Basilisk is 101 grams, G502 at 121, and the Model I at 69. That's not even the same ballpark. It's not like you can fingertip this mouse, but those of you with medium to large hands will still find this plenty agile enough for FPS with the added bonus of being suitable for pretty much anything else you'd use a mouse for. The side button config is cool, but the weight is the real deciding factor here. If you've waited for a lightweight G502 or the 502 is just too narrow in your hand to be comfortable, this is a great option. Despite reviewing well, I've personally never made a glorious mouse. There's a strong chance I would actually main this, but it's wired and I just can't go back spoiled. We're well past the point of wireless mice not performing as well as their wired counterparts. We're not close to a point where the top tier wireless mice are affordable for everyone. Glorious wireless models come in at $79.99. That is much more affordable than models from Razer or Logitech. Even though they clearly have the tech, I'm not saying they should have only released the wireless version at this point, but they should have definitely released the wired and the wireless at the same time. Hopefully it won't be months before we see the wireless version in market. That is honestly all I can offer here in terms of criticism. While the shape and the wire initially felt pretty late to the party for me personally, I do think there's still a sizable group of people who've been waiting for that lightweight G502 style mouse. The only caveat being that in addition to cutting weight, they've also cut some functionality and Logitech has no trouble beating Glorious on price point. As with anything, you just have to figure out your specific needs and then find something that's the right fit for you. And speaking of finding the right fit for you, there's a great tool out there for online shopping, Luster, the sponsor of today's video. Luster is a completely free online shopping tool that does an exhausting amount of research for you so you don't have to. Their engine has indexed over 51 million online reviews and counting to help bring you the best product recommendations out there. Instead of spending literal hours reading online reviews or watching content trying to find the information that you need, Luster can provide you with instant product recommendations and it even functions right in Inside Amazon. You can see product rankings, potentially better options, and summaries of the reviews that they evaluated from sources like Wirecutter, Ratings.com, even other YouTubers. And it's not just mice and keyboards. I've used Luster for vacuums, coffee makers, air fryers. They make it really easy to compare prices across stores like Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, and Target, and Luster even alerts you to sale prices. Luster is totally free and can save you a ton of both time and money. If you're ready to shop smarter, click the link down in the description. Big thanks to Luster for continuing to support the channel and thank you so much for your time. If there's any mice I missed over the past few months that you really want to see some coverage on, just let me know in the comments. If you want to check out some other mouse reviews, you can do that right here. That's it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.